Hey, what's going on guys? It's Cole here, and today I'm bringing you a video on how to set up the Ship of Harkinian Ocarina of Time PC port. This is not a port for people who want to play the most authentic and close to the original version of the game possible. Rather, this is more for people who want to play the game, but with a lot of modern enhancements, quality of life improvements, etc. Overall, this is my personal favorite way to go back and revisit Ocarina of Time, and with the right settings, it's not too far off from the original, so overall, I still highly recommend this, even if you haven't played the original version. For any of you watching who may have tried to emulate this in the past or set that up, this is actually even easier than setting up an emulator. Actually installing this is so, so simple. And most of this video will actually be spent on things like quality of life improvements and the settings within the port, rather than actually setting it up. So with all that being gone over, let's get into how to install this port. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your desktop and open up a file explorer. Go to whatever drive you're going to want this on, on your PC, your Mac, Linux, whatever. And you're going to want to create a new folder that you're going to know has this port installed in it. So name it whatever you want. I named it Ship of Harkinian after the port. You can name it Ocarina of Time. Again, just anything so that you know where it is and what it's named. Once you have this folder created, you are going to want to open it. And the first thing you're going to need to do is find yourself an Ocarina of Time debug ROM. This cannot be for the Master Quest version of the game. This has to be for the original release and it has to be a debug ROM. This port has a lot of enhancements that will only work with an actual development build of the game, and while I can't direct you guys as to where you should go and find one of these for legal reasons, copyright reasons, etc., these aren't that hard to come across and you should be able to find one with light searching on the internet. So what you're going to want to do is go and find yourself one of those ROMs and drop the Z64 file right into this new folder that we just made. The next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and join the Harbor Masters 64 Discord server, and go to the download section and find the most recent version available at the time of recording, this is 5.1.1, and find the version to download with your operating system that you plan to play this on. Clicking on this link might tell you that it's potentially dangerous, but I can vouch for these guys, these are completely safe files to go and download. So go to wherever that link takes you and download the file from there, it's going to come in the form of a zip file and you're going to want to drop that zip back into the new folder that we just made alongside with your new Z64 file. Once you have it in there, you're going to want to right click on the zip file and select the extract here option. This process might take a few seconds or so, but all that it's going to do is take all the files out of the zip and dump them right into this directory. Once this process is complete, you can go ahead and delete the zip file as you already have all the individual files here, and go ahead and open the OTR GUI file, and this will open up the installation process for Ship of Harkinian. The only option here is going to be open OOT ROM, click on that and it will bring you to a new file explorer, and in here you're going to want to go to your directory where you have all this installed and select your debug ROM and then Ship of Harkinian's installer will automatically process and port over all the files from the game. Depending on your system, this process could take anywhere from 1 minute to 10 minutes, so just give it the time it needs and wait until it says that it is done. Once it is done, you can close out of these windows by clicking the X I do here on screen, and then you can go ahead and open up the SOH file. This is the actual executable that you will use to open the game every time that you go to play it, and this will open the game for the first time. And as a quick side note here, if you click into the window and you press Alt and Enter on your keyboard at the same time on Windows, that is a universal full screen hotkey and you can use that to enter and exit full screen whenever you want with this. And with that, your game is installed and ready to go. You could play through the whole thing right now, but for the rest of the video, I'm going to run through the settings and the enhancements that I use to get the best kind of mix between a modernized and vanilla style. This is an especially good way to play if it's your first time through, and for returning players, this is the way that I've always preferred to do it. So first off, you're going to press F1 to open and close the enhancements menu, and we're going to start by going to settings, controller, and we're going to configure our controller settings. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select the type of controller that you have, make sure that it is plugged in or turned on and synced up whenever you open the port, Otherwise, it won't recognize it during the initial setup here. But once you have that selected, you'll be able to bind everything as you would want. You'll see the label for what the button would be called on an N64 controller, and then you simply click on the input and press whatever button you want it to be bound to, and it will do so. The one thing that I highly recommend for people playing on a dual analog stick controller, something like an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, is that you go over and you bind the C buttons to the D-pad, the directional pad, and you rebind the right stick to your right stick by pushing it up and down and left and right and all those sorts of things. For mouse and keyboard players, you can put the C buttons on whatever, and I would recommend putting the right stick on the arrow keys or something similar 
because later on we're going to set this up to be our camera movement if you choose to do so. Next we're going to go to settings and graphics and we're going to turn the MSAA to 2. This is your anti-aliasing. It's going to make the edges a little more rounded, but while keeping that sharpness and that polygonal look of the original. Next we're going to go to enhancements and gameplay. And here for the first four dropdowns under this, we leave everything by default to keep it as close to the original game as possible. But if you are playing on a mouse and keyboard or on a controller that does not have vibration support, turn on Visual Stone of Agony. This is a feature where normally your controller would rumble when you're near a secret, but this will just make it so that if you have the item and you're near a secret, an icon will appear on screen instead. From here, we are going to go to Enhancements and Graphics. And this is a completely optional one. If you want the dynamic wallet icon, all this is going to do is when you get a wallet upgrade to increase the capacity of it, it will just change the icon of your wallet to reflect how big your capacity is. Completely optional, but I personally like to turn it on because it's just a little nice feature that they added. Now from here, I just want to point out the enhancements fixes section. This is a bunch of different settings that could fix bugs or problems with the port. If you do encounter them, these are not consistent bugs that every player will come across. But if at any point you have a major bug that seems to be from the port and not from the original game, check this menu and you might be able to find a fix for it to help you get past it. Next, go to Enhancements Restoration, and this is another complete preference one, but I personally turn on Red Ganon Blood in the original 1.0 release of the game. The final boss had red blood. In later versions, it was censored and changed to green. This just restores it and makes it red the way it was in the original release. After this, I went and turned on the autosave. This is completely optional. The game originally didn't have autosaves, but this is a fan-made port running on a PC. So crashes are going to happen inevitably a couple times per playthrough at least. This is just going to reduce the amount of backtracking and replaying the game that you're going to have to do when those inevitable crashes happen. Below that is one of the biggest enhancements that you can make to the game, and this is the frame interpolation. For those who are not familiar with what this is, this is not raising the game's actual frame rate, rather it is using an AI upscaler to use the game's original frames as keyframes of sort and fill in the middle with some kind of motion and it gives off the illusion of being set to a higher frame rate than it is without messing with the game's internal clock, physics, etc. Ocarina of Time happens to be one of those games where if you raise the frame rate, things get sped up, the physics get all out of whack. So this is the best solution to raise the frame rate visually without affecting the actual gameplay. Turn this to whatever you want depending on what kind of system you're on. I set it to 60 as that's kind of the standard for games nowadays. But know that you have to set this and your display to a multiple of 20 frames per second, otherwise this is going to cause some major problems. Now below this, I checked off the disable LOD and disable draw distance. What these do respectively is LOD is level of detail, meaning objects that are further away will load in in their full detail. If you have a system that is capable of this, which most modern day PCs will be capable of loading the full assets from a game from 1998, this will just make the assets look better from further away, and while a lot of the time your eyes aren't really going to notice the biggest difference, sometimes they will, and this can be really nice. Disabling the draw distance will prevent the game from completely not loading in assets that are too far away from you. Again, this was an original performance saver back on the N64, but here, since we're on modern systems nowadays, we can normally handle the processing power to display these, and it just helps to be able to see things from further away, adds to the immersion, overall it makes it a better experience, However, I would not turn off the Kokiri draw distance, as this is an actual gameplay mechanic and something that is actually established in Legend of Zelda lore, that these characters actually use magic to be invisible from people who are too far away from them. So, even though it's not the biggest deal, I would recommend leaving this unchecked, especially if it's your first playthrough. And let's finish this off by setting up the free camera, go to customize game controls right above the frame interpolation, and under camera controls, find your way to the third person camera section, and enable the free camera, and if you have something bound to the right stick in the controller configuration from earlier, this will act as your free camera by default. And rather than using the kind of snap aiming kind of system that Ocarina originally had, you'll be able to have a free moving camera and it makes the game feel so much smoother to play than it ever did before. And with that, that's all of the settings that I use for my Ship of Harkinian PC port. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy, or if you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to go ahead and leave a like, a comment, or a subscription, anything to let me and the YouTube algorithm know that it helped you out. And if you guys do have any further questions about setting this up, or if you have any problems along the way, feel free to go ahead and leave a comment down below, and me or someone else who has already set it up themselves might be able to help you out. And one last thing before you go, I do have a 100% completion guide covering every single thing that you can possibly do in Ocarina of Time in the works. If you're catching this video later after it goes up, there's a good chance that at least some of it will already be up, if not the entire thing. 
So feel free to check out the description or the cards in the top right hand of the video. And if it's up, you'll be able to find it in either of those places. And with that, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching the video and goodbye.